Hello everyone, I hope and pray that all is well with you and your family. It's been a week since the implementation of uh, the enhanced community quarantine in our country as a precautionary measure to mitigate the spread of the virus, uh, COVID-19. And I believe that many of us here are still adjusting with this new uh, challenging situation. I'm here right now at the Ministry Center and nobody's here. So it's empty, it's, it's, it's different. And like uh, the other uh, day, uh, there was a police like cruising around with, in, in, my, in my place and uh, with a loudspeaker announcing the citywide curfew. And it's, it's sad and it's, it's different to see our country or our, our, our city look like a ghost town. So there's no cars around, only few people on the streets. So it's like uh, you are watching a you know, post-apocalyptic movie. And it made me feel sad and uneasy. And I asked myself, now what in the world we are going to do? How are we going to get through this? Then I thought about my family first because my parents, they are in their 60s already, who are at the high risk from the virus. And then I thought about the church people. I thought about you and I miss the church. I miss the, the fellowship. I thought about our ministries as in Subic Bay Community of Faith. You know, having this enhanced, you know, quarantine uh, prevent us from going through our day-to-day -day lives doing the ministry of our church and building up uh, the body of Christ. It limits us. It prevents us from seeing our dear friends and families. So what about our neighbors? What about our <clears throat> access to food? What about the availability of medicines? The more I thought about this, the more concerned I worry and, and worried I became. This is, you know, after all the first time I've experienced this kind of lockdown and I'm sure this is also the first time for many of you. Then I, I began to quiet my heart before the Lord and reminded myself of His sovereignty. I realized that this situation was another wake-up call for us to understand and see that we are not in control. But God is indeed in control. We may do everything possible to make things happen the way we want it to go. But in the end, our Lord always has a way of reminding us about who truly is in control. And it dawned on me that we can react uh, in one of the three ways of the current situation. You know, we can let our emotions run wild being fearful and scared, you're allowing the paranoia of our minds overtake our logic and reason, or be bitter or angry, you know, and, and defiant, you know, raising our fists to the government and to the authorities for, for putting all of us in this situation. Or we can be calm and rested in the Lord, you know, trusting His sovereignty and behaving the way he would like his children to behave in the face of crisis. And it was in this moment I chose the third uh, option, to trust in the Lord and lean not on my own understanding in this life situation. So committing to that path, I, I pondered more on how you know, God would like me to represent him during this time of difficulties. You know, the Holy Spirit impressed in my heart, impressed to me the mindset that we should uh, have that would bring glory and honor to His name in this time of crisis and that would benefit everyone around us. And today, I would like to share with you three things that we should practice religiously during this time of crisis and beyond. Now, first... Let us be submissive. You know, submission is an act of humility. It is also a reflection of our faith and trust in God in times of trials and difficulties. 
It shows our acceptance in the things God allows and help us focus on moving forward rather than dwelling on the things that we have no control over. In times of crisis or in difficult situation, you know, our composure matters. So instead of complaining and uh, clamoring against the situation, let us exercise trust and obedience first and foremost to our God who already has a solution to this whole crisis and knows that in His perfect timing, things will be the way they should be. And secondly, submit to our governing authority who God placed to took after our well-being. So let us uh, peacefully and submissively obey the instructions of those who have, be, who have uh, given authority over us and the land and, uh, and listen uh, as well to the medical experts for the safety of everyone. It reminds us the word of God in 1 Peter chapter 13, verse 1. It says that everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that is God, which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. So the instruction, uh, the, as instructed by the Holy Scripture, let us exercise respect and submission to the governing authorities because there's wisdom in submission. Secondly, let us be prayerful. Aside from submitting to authorities, we must also immerse ourselves in prayer. You know, prayer simply means uh, talking to God or communing with God. And there is, there is only one principle of prayer that is to do and seek the will of God. Now, we pray not because we want our prayers to be answered, but because we want to show our dependence on God who knows what is best for us. Prayer, my friend, is entrusting our future in the hands of God and acknowledging Him that He is in control. And in prayer, we surrender all our cares and anxiety before Him. So in this manner, we have been instructed by the Holy Scripture to pray for our leaders. And then Paul said to uh, Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter uh, 2, verse 1 and 2, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions prayers intercession and thanksgiving be made all be made be, be made for all people for kings and for those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness so also here during my reflection time i considered this uh, community quarantine as an opportunity to spend more time in the lord or with the Lord, to surrender all my cares to Him and all my anxiety, to pray for people, to pray for church people, to pray for my friends, and to seek God's face during these trying times. I was reminded by uh, uh, the Word of God in Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. It says here, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart, hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So my friend, turn your worries into prayer. Remember, you know, when you stop praying, you worry more. But when you pray more, you worry less. So take this opportunity to spend more time in God, with God in prayer, so the, as, as you stay home. And lastly, be grateful in the Lord. Now being grateful is having a thankful heart. Your heart is grateful in the Lord in good times and bad times. Your faith is steadfast and your commitment uh, to Him is unwavering. 
In times of crisis, you know, we have this opportunity to shine for Jesus uh, by being grateful in all circumstances. You know, Paul reminds us uh, with his life experiences how to be grateful in the Lord in all situations in Philippians chapter 4, verses uh, 12 to 13. He said, I know what it is to be in need, and I know how it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through Him who strengthens me. Now, why being grateful in these trying times? Now, because we still have food that we can eat or a roof on our heads. So even we can't, uh, you know, physically be with our friends and families, that we have the social media like this, that we can still communicate and encourage one another. Help us connect with one another. Now we still have these things that keeps us entertained, like uh, Netflix. So we still have, you know, people around us who cares for us, who loves us and prays for us. And most importantly, we have the assurance of eternal life in Christ Jesus. So let us be grateful, my friend, because we know that everything in this world is just temporary. You know, COVID-19 COVID is just temporary. All our hardship in this world, all the trials in this world are just temporary. Your wealth and your health is just, are just temporary. Everything will come to pass, but only the love of God endures forever. As I conclude my short exhortation, let us remember these three things in times of crisis like this. Let us exercise humility by being submissive to the authorities. Let us be prayerful at all times. And let us be grateful in all circumstances. My friends, this will soon pass. And I look forward uh, to the day that I am worshiping with you all again. I look forward to hearing beautiful songs by Pharaoh. I look forward to the beautiful smiles of our ushers. I look forward you know, hearing the laughters of the children around. I look forward to a meaningful worship and fellowship with you once again, honoring God in our uh, journey as we develop dynamic disciples. So, and I look forward shaking hands with you and, and spending time with you in fellowship and prayer. So as, as we pray to the world for God's healing, let us also pray most of all for the spiritual healing of those who are still lost. May the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know, reach them. So let's, let's continue to, to commit to the Lord to spread His love and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ even uh, through our social media. So thank you once again for, for listening. And let's be praying for one another. May God bless you and keep you.